friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Vaughn Fawn's Really High Five. So I've stamped out the images I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And I'm going to be coloring with my Copic markers today, starting with the Fox. I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18. I'm beginning with the YR18 to lay in some shadows, mostly along the backside of his body and anywhere that there would be a natural shadow, like on the inside of the arm, on the far side of his body, and between his legs, and a little bit on his nose since that's sloping upward. I'm going to just concentrate on his body for now. I'll come back and do the tail after. So I'm blending that out with the YR14, just saving a little bit of room for the YR12 so that I have a nice highlight. So I'll just blend over the edge of the YR14 and get that nice smooth transition. And then I will grab my YR18 again and do the tail. Sometimes I like to break an image up this way and do it in parts because the uh, quicker you can get to all of those areas on each section, the better the blend is going to be because the ink is still really saturated into the paper and hasn't dried back. It's really just up to you and the speed of your coloring. So for the white areas of his body, I'm using YR000 and YR00, just laying in a little bit of quick shading and letting that blend off into the white. I'm also going to color the inside of his ear with that shade. And then while I'm at it, I'm also going to do the bear's tummy on the inside of his ears and also the mouse. So it's just real quick and easy with those shades. Since I had them out, I decided to just do them all at once. And having their bellies all the same color is just going to tie them together a bit. I'm moving on to my bear's body. And for that, I'm using E51. E53 and E55. So the E55 is going to be my darkest shade and it's not a real dark color. I decided to keep him more on the lighter side, more of like a grizzly bear shade maybe. I just thought that would be something different since I usually tend to color bears a little bit darker. And uh, so I'm blending out with the E53 as my mid-tone. And I'm going to just uh, do a bit more shading on the right hand side. I'm putting the shadows on the critters backs and keeping the light on their faces. So now I'll come in with the E51 and just color in all of that white space, making sure to blend that transition line from the E53. And then for the little mouse, I'll use W00, W1, and W3. So W3 will be the shadow. And again, since he's facing to the left, I'm going to put his shadows on the right. I just love his little face. These critters are super duper cute. I just love this set so much. So after I've got the shadows in, I'm blending out with the W1 and then I'll finish with the W00. So all the coloring on these little guys is going to be nice and light today. I didn't want anything to be too dark, just for a different kind of look. I colored in the mouse's nose with YR00 and then used RV11 to give them all some rosy cheeks. And I did do a double layer on the bear since he was a little bit darker, just to get that to show up. I'm going to move on and color in one of my balloons and I'm using V91, V93, V95, and V99. So I'm laying in that V99 down at the bottom of the balloon and then also a little bit higher on the left hand side. And then I'm going to begin to blend up with the V95. Just making sure to really blend that transition so it's nice and smooth. Since this is a balloon, I really don't want there to be too much texture there. I want it to look like a smooth surface. 
So then I'll use the V93 and then save the top area for that V91, which is such a pale shade that it will give it that translucent look that I'm going for. And I'll also be coloring in some of the accessory images off screen with each of these next shades. So the middle balloon is going to be red, so I'm using my favorite red combo, which is R29, R39, and R59. Again, laying that dark shadow down toward the bottom and just a little bit higher on the left, blending out with the R39, and then saving the majority of that for the R29, which is nice and bright. And I actually decided that it was going to be just too much with the three shades. I needed something a little bit softer, so I brought in the R24. Then for the third balloon, I wanted that to be yellow. So I'm using Y21, YR21, and YR23. Just in the same pattern, um, just coming up from the bottom with the YR23, that's my darkest. And then the YR21 is going to be the mid-tone. I use the Y21 as the highlight. And then again, just like the other balloons, decided I needed a fourth shade. So I brought in the Y11, which is just a little bit brighter. So it's going to give it that same kind of uh, appearance as the other balloons. I decided it was looking a little pale in comparison to the others, so I went over everything with a second layer to really beef up the saturation. The final color that I'm using is green, and the markers are YG61, YG63, and YG67. I'm going to finish up any of the coloring that remains. I just really liked this combo of purple, red, yellow, and green. Um, I saw this on like one of those little design seeds that you find on Pinterest, and I thought it was something really different to any kind of color combination I've done in the past, and I just wanted to try that out, and I really liked how these colors worked together. It's something totally different for me. So I trim these out with the matching dies, and then I can move on to my focal panel. I'm using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy Stencil with some tumbled glass distress ink and blending that onto a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock. So I'm gonna start way up at the top and begin to blend on some of that ink, and then I can turn my stencil so that I get a different cloud layer and just continue ink blending down the panel until I get all the way to the bottom. I really love these different scene building stencils. I think they make it so nice and easy to create a very quick background that really lets your coloring shine. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'm kind of lifting up a little bit sooner on the uh, ink blending tool and getting a little softer as I go down the panel so it's darkest at the top and kind of just fades as you get toward the bottom. Then I'll tap a little bit of that ink onto my work surface and water it down with a few spritzes of my distress sprayer and then just do a little uh, splatter detail to give it some nice texture. Once I have that completely covered with some different size droplets, I will set that panel aside to dry. And then I've die cut another piece of Bristol using the Lawn Fawn Meadow Borders. I'm going to cover that completely with Bundled Sage Distress Oxide ink. And I'm just being careful as I go because I don't want to bend any of those thin grasses that are sticking up. But once I have that completely covered in that nice pale green shade, I'm going to pull in some mowed lawn just to deepen up the bottom edge. So I'll blend that on just the bottom area and then up the two sides a bit. And then I'll go back to my previous ink blending tool and just blend that transition so it's nice and smooth. I'll tap a bit of that mowed lawn onto my work surface and water that down so I can do some more splatter detail so the two panels match each other. And then once this one has completely dried, I'm going to pop it into my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment on it. 
I'm using Versifying Onyx Black ink to stamp out Happy Birthday, Have an Uplifting Day. So that is two different sentiments that I have put together into one. And I'm just being very careful not to smudge that ink until it's had time to dry. And then I will take my card base and pop that into my Misty. I'm going to stamp on the inside of my card using Lawn Fawn's Mermaid ink. And I'm using the little bunny that didn't fit on the front of the card and another balloon and the sentiment that says, you're awesome. So I'm going to stamp those down first and then I will line up the balloon string carefully so that it looks like it's connected to the balloon and is also being held in the bunny's paws. And then I can stamp that down again so that um, it's all connected. So now that I have all of my elements done, I can begin to assemble my card. I'm going to start by adhering my focal panel directly to my card base. It's going to cover the entire front of the card, which is a standard four and a quarter by five and a half card base. Then I'm going to pop the grassy panel up on some foam tape. I laid out my little critters so that I could see where I wanted those balloon strings to go because I'm going to adhere the strings flat to the card using some liquid glue. The critters and the balloons will be popped up with some foam tape. So I'm just carefully taking those out and adding the glue to the back of those and just making sure that everything is spaced out correctly. So until now, I left the release paper on the foam tape so that I was able to move things around without them being stuck down. But now I can peel those release papers off and begin to adhere my balloons. And once I have three of those in place, I can start to adhere my little critters as well. I just want to space them out so that it really appears as though they are hanging on to those balloons. So I'm making sure to overlap the balloon string at some point with their outstretched hands. Once I have all of the main images in place, I can add their little accessories. I'm going to give each of the critters a little party hat and I'm tipping them at an angle to just make it look extra fun. And I'm also gonna give the little mouse a tiny little party hat. And then I have the two gifts. So I'm going to put one in the bear's hand. At first I thought maybe I would add it to the grass, but I decided to go with my original plan and have the bear holding it. So I'm just uh, adding that into his open hand there. And then the other one is going to go in the fox's hand. So I guess it's the mouse's birthday today. So the other two guys have brought their little gifts for him. So I just set that down, kind of tucked behind the mouse's hand. I decided I didn't like the angle of the red gift. So I did pull that back up and just twist it a little bit more to the left. And I was happier with that. And that is going to complete my card for today. I'll lift that up to the camera and give you another peek at the inside. I decided not to add any embellishment because this could really be a unisex card. And if it would be given to a boy, they probably wouldn't really care about sequins or glitter. So I just left it as is. I thought the coloring stood out on its own. So if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. You can also ring that notification bell if you want to be sure that my videos always end up in your feed. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy, so you can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an amazing day. Bye-bye.